Which Phil? is updated in the graphic here. The five o'clock advisory just came in a couple minutes ago. You I'm not wearing a microphone okay. here. <laughs> well, let me slide next to you. See, so you have. Well, I just tell you about it. <laughs> yeah, it just came in. Doesn't look like there's really an appreciable shift in it. More or less the same track here. Let's fill in there. Um, and let's uh, bring it up on the big screen too. We got it on the big screen. We got it on the big screen. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. okay so, okay, any any change in the track? West northwest now nine miles per hour. As you were mentioning, that kind of wobbly motion. Motion. We were actually talking a little bit about that. Uh, down in Miami over the last couple of days, the trachoidal motion, they call it. You mm -hmm. see it with intense hurricanes where you actually have a little vortexes rotating yeah. around with, with, the eye. Within the eye, yeah. And it's almost like uh, if you're driving in your car and you have one of the wheels out of balance right. and, it, and you, f you feel that motion with the rotation, that's essentially what's going on here when you get a really powerful storm. So instead of moving west-northwest in a uniform fashion, that's just the overall, if you can imagine it, almost like a figure skater spinning and then sliding across the ice. It's the average motion, but that doesn't mean it's not wobbling to the north, wobbling to the west, wobbling right. to the north. Right. So that's what we're seeing with that. But overall, there you go. A four. I'd like to zoom in. I don't know if you noticed that. I know, you do like that. <laughs> Hyper-local. <laughs> Steve Jeremy. <laughs> I like to be hyper-local. That's where we live, right? That's okay, right. so this is the northern part. I wonder, as we just observed on Max Defender 8 on our radar network out of Key West, that eye is just sitting right on the northern coast. A piece of it might be touching the northern part of the coast, but this is, uh, you can see that... Uh, is, is just they're, they're marking this essentially mm -hmm. off the coast of Cuba and they're moving it to the northwest and as a category four hurricane that's Sunday at 2 a.m. kind of where the models have expected it and has been very consistent about that Sunday at 2 a.m. and we'll just zoom in here you can see there's Fort Myers right there on the map and uh, factoring in the stronger storm surge this is a large geographic storm it's had some time to build up surge on the eastern side, you were just down in Miami, and mm -hmm. uh, all, I think that they're still going to get some kind of surge in there, believe it or not, even though it's that far away, it's that big of a storm. They'll probably get a good seven feet there in Biscayne e Bay. Yeah, even in Biscayne Bay, there's a big concern in there. The sprawling nature of the storm, of course, Miami, the notorious storm is Andrew. Right. And seeing those comparisons in size between Irma and Andrew, right. Irma dwarfs Andrew, not in intensity, of course, but right. in area, and it's large storms like this like Katrina that can generate that larger surge across a large area. Not to liken this storm to Katrina, only in the sense that it's so broad that you can see those winds creating a much larger wind field pushing that water on shore. And one thing you also notice too is that the, the track here is tightening up. And let's go ahead and take that full screen again, guys. The, the track is actually tightening up uh, as it gets closer to a possible landfall, the cone of air, the window of possible movement, mm -hmm. I've called it a number of different things through the years. Uh, I always call it frustrating because it is very difficult to explain to people what it's all about. But you can see that cone is getting much thinner uh, across the uh, interior portion of the area. In fact, if you look at portions of it, uh, the eastern sections of Highlands County are actually out of the cone of air at this mm -hmm. point. But that does not repeat, does not mean that you won't have effects from the storm. It just means that the actual forecast track is getting more uh, assured by this uh, nobody on the peninsula can avoid no. these impacts at this point no 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 so okay that's a category three storm and that would be monday at 2 a.m with mm -hmm. 115 mile per hour winds so kind of very similar to what and I, I i don't really like the center line but i put a very faint one on there to just attract it doesn't look like mm -hmm. this is tracked much at all uh changed at all from the 2 a.m advisory the forecast track and the wind speeds themselves look similar perhaps a little bit lesser than they were and it makes sense because we were looking at the spaghetti plots just before we uh, came back on air and they're really starting to come into good agreement which wasn't the case over the last few days there was always a couple outliers west coast east right. coast and that, as a forecaster, introduces the uncertainty into the forecast. You want, you know, there's that adage that, you know, all forecast models are wrong. Right. When you have a consensus, now you're starting to feel that they're correct. Right. And yeah. you can have high confidence in a forecast. And unfortunately, it's not the forecast we wanted. Right. But at least it's one that we're becoming more confident in. And allows us to prepare for. Mm -hmm. I mean, the uh, the type of hazards that we're talking about, right. uh, the uh, the wind hazards in inland, they don't have to worry about saltwater flooding, but the coastal hazards we're talking about, the higher tides and the surges that we're talking about as well. So that's your timing on your 5 o'clock advisory, guys. Gives you a pretty good idea. Uh, that movement there at west-northwest is a little bit slower forward speed than what we've seen previously, but the, the current winds of 125 mm -hmm. miles per hour and then uh, the forecast winds as well. A lot of warm energy to draw off of. It, the closer it is to the coast, 
uh, in this regard. You can see it still there's a lot of that warm Gulf water onto the west. Uh, it's the latent heat of condensation is what drives this, the energy, the released heat from that. That's what drives this uh, and makes these storms much stronger. That's what they thrive off of. And as long as there's enough warm water to draw that condensation from, that's where you get uh, the additional energy. And I can tell you from being down south, there's that eerie feeling when you look up at the sky and you can kind of tell it's an atmosphere that's starting to be influenced by the tropical system. Yeah. You can see the clouds, the overall yep. motion. Yep. Driving across Alligator Alley this morning, we had a couple of those tornado worn storms around. You could see the clouds starting to have a little bit of that spin to it. Of course, uh, we were going west, so we were about the only people that were going west after I went there a couple days ago, and yeah. we were the only people going east, but <laughs> that's how things change with these things. Oh, when you cover news, it's often yep. the case, yeah. But it definitely felt down there like uh, people were, were getting the picture that this was really the last day to prepare safely, and it was uh, clearing out pretty quickly. All right. Well, that gives you a rough idea on the 5 o'clock advisory, guys. Do you have any questions about the track? Uh, because uh, it looks like the track is essentially the same. I think this uh, position Sunday at 2 p.m. might be a little bit weaker. And these are numbers from the National Hurricane Center. As we always say, this will change, as we've seen this week. But one thing you do notice between the uh, 11 a.m. advisory is that the changes just haven't been that great. Yeah, and it's the only good thing is we once we see that turn to the north, that's finally where we're seeing a weakness in the high, and then the storm can finally accelerate, which is what we want. We want this thing in and out. We know it's coming here now. We want to get it in and out. So hopefully we can see an increase in that forward speed right now, still out of the west-northwest at about 9 miles per hour. Once it turns to the northwest and eventually the north, that's where we'll start to see this thing pick up speed, maybe up to eventually uh, 15 uh, miles per hour or so. Then it gets up into the southeast, and all bets are off at that point as it does uh, start to slow down. But hope, thankfully for us, we'll no longer uh, be under its influence. Yeah, I think by, I was going to take a look at the RPM forecast computer model to see um, what that actually looked like. We hit this without mm -hmm. that ticket. Okay. Um, that will give us an idea. I kind of want to give people an idea of what they can expect in terms of rainfall for the region. And uh, when you look at this, this evening, scattered showers, kind of like we're seeing on Max Defender 8, these kind of rolling here from east to west. As Ian was mentioning, the flow is being taken over by this very large area of low pressure, the hurricane to our south, Irma. And as the day goes along, it just kind of progressively gets worse um, from south to north with additional rain bands and then eventually the bulk of the uh, heavy rain associated with the center of the hurricane itself. As we get into the afternoon, hurricane force winds with torrential downpours. Again, this is a computer model forecast from the RPM. Uh, Look at the size of the eye. Represented it's it's there. pretty pretty large, represented on the computer. So as you can see here, it's Sunday at 7:30. So we're really talking about the second half of Sunday, specifically uh, Sunday evening into early Monday morning. So about a 12-hour period, really, where we have to where we'll be on here with you through the whole thing, uh, talking you through it. Uh, showing your radar images from Max Defender 8 and also trying to give you the best forecast and data we have. Our news reporters will be out there reporting on what's happening live on the ground. And, of course, any kind of information that officials want to pass along to will be right here on News Channel 8 to pass that along to you. Now, that's at 545. This is where we get into what we were talking about with the onshore flow, that uh, west and then northwest flow with the onshore. And that's where we have to really watch our, our high tides. Yeah, that's going to be an issue here where... It'll seem like the storm has passed and overall the rain will start to uh, hit the brakes a little bit, but that onshore flow is really going to be an issue, especially lingering for our northern spots, Nature Coast counties. That, depending on the track, could actually see B when they see uh, the worst of the surge. So there's the 5 o'clock numbers. If you missed this uh, a couple of minutes ago, we went into detail. We zoomed in quite a bit. 125 mile per hour winds, that puts it in the... Uh, Category 3 range, that's from 111 to 129 is the Category 3, so that puts it as a Category 3 storm. And then uh, ramps it back up to a Category 4 as it moves the system into uh, the southwest part of Florida. And that's where the model trend has been, as we've been saying. Again, we'll take a look at that forecast track in case you just tuned in. And we repeat a lot of this if you watch it over a long period of time, but you keep in mind a lot of people are tuning in uh, and getting this information for the first time. So uh, the red cover around all of Florida are hurricane warnings. We're all under a hurricane warning if you're watching. And we're talking about hazards from hurricanes. We're talking about high wind gusts, the concerns for flooding from uh, just rainfall, and then, of course, coastal flooding, bay flooding, river flooding, inland flooding, etc. cetera. Uh, that's what the hurricane warnings just start giving us a heads up about. And it's based on timing, hurricane watches and warnings. You have a 48-hour time period with uh, watches and then uh, warnings are, are 36 hours and of course we're in within that range now so that's why those warnings are up for the area so 125 mile per hour winds are mighty impressive and that's where we are right now. Julie got anything Max Defender 8 over there? 
Uh, we can definitely pull up some Max Defender 8 and All show right. you some of those storms that we are tracking, especially in South Florida right now. Let's pull that up and kind of show you. You can see. Let's put this in play mode for you. And you can see big picture wise, we are tracking some of those showers and storms in South Florida. These are the outer rain bands from the storm. And you notice this red polygon. This is the tornado watch box box that was issued from the National Weather Service. This is very common as these tropical systems move on shore because of the quick spin-ups that you see. That's a pretty good storm there around Fort Lauderdale. Yes, absolutely. We'll want to zoom in on some of those. Right now you can see pretty quiet here in the Tampa Bay area, but check out the storm within some of these rain bands. This is just west of Coral Springs and Max Defender 8 is able to see through this uh, these outer rain bands all the way and still give you a clearly defined look at the storms as they're near Coral Springs. So this is an idea of something that we'll be seeing as the storm moves our way. You can see yeah. even in the outer bands, intense, I mean, this is probably torrential rainfall. We're also talking about potential of a spit up tornado in this area. And I know we've seen probably gusts well over tropical storm force already in South Florida today. It just moves it so much faster, though, than in this kind of atmosphere than in a typical uh, uh, summer thunderstorm period of time. But that's a strong thunderstorm and possibly a good preview of what we could see perhaps tomorrow.